What up, everybody? This is the Chicago Sports Talk, Michael. Here today with a, another topic um, discussion. I'm sorry I couldn't come to you guys with the latest post games because I feel like there is nothing really to talk about. The Bears are out, are out of playoffs or do any like upcoming previews and keys to victory because that's not what you care about. What you care about is the future of the Chicago Bears. And I'm going to be doing a lot of mock drafts in this offseason. So if you have not hit the subscriber uh, button and hit the notification, you have to so you don't miss any offseason content that I do because it's going to be a lot of offseason content that I'm doing. So... With, the, with that being said, Matt Everflues has been the biggest story in my book. Because after we fired Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, we brought in Ryan Poles and uh, Matt Everflues. And originally, I wasn't a fan of the Matt Everflues hire. I felt like it was kind of stupid to me because you have a young developing quarterback and you shouldn't you should have at least hired him someone decent. Like the three candidates were Dan Quinn, uh, Jim Cardwell, who was uh, with the Lions, and Matt Eberflus. And let's be real, folks. The three wins are not going to defy, and this season is not going to defy Matt Everflus, and it certainly does not define Ryan Poles either. Do you want to know what this does? This says, hey, after we put up a fight against the um, the Eagles, who are the best team in the league, and the Packers are, it's going to have to come down to with the current talent of Matt Everflus, will they succeed if we put together a squad on the defense? And folks, I'll say this much. The three the first five games before the mini bye week where we had where we uh, where we were making uh, Justin Fields look more of a pocket passer than a read option offense. We were having Justin Fields just sitting back in the pocket and throwing. But the problem is, is we do not have the good offensive line. You saw that against the Eagles. And we also don't have the best receivers in the league. Folks, if you were expecting Everflus to change the culture of this Bears team, then... One, you you uh, are smoking crack, or you just don't know, or you just don't know what you're talking about. And I'm gonna be for real. I'm not sold on Everflus either because I don't want to get sold on Everflus just like I did with Matt Nagy back in 2018, and then the next year Everflus like goes like eight and eight, eight and eight, and then has like a six and ten season, and then we have a game where we look like damn. I think it was against the Browns where we had only one passing yard the entire game. And we and we got our young quarterback, Justin Fields, killed out there. So I'm not going to get sold on Eberflus early. I think it's fair. I know a lot of Bears fans are probably sold on Eberflus, and that's fine. I understand it because I watched some of his press conferences, and the guy doesn't seem like – the guy seems like a tough – head coach to me that he does not that he expects hard work on the field and off the field. You saw when Vilas fumbled the football against the Eagles, he was he said he was pretty upset at uh Vilas when he fumbled that ball. He wasn't too pleased. So and he and he talked about taking care of the football in his first press conference with the Bears. So Folks, I think next year is going to define um, where Matt Everflus and Ryan Pulse stand in my book. 
because this season does not define their futures because they don't have talented personnel on the team. They are most likely working with scraps, but they're continuing to fight hard in these games, and all they need is the right pieces around them to succeed. And I will say this, we need to have an, a balanced attack with a average offense and a good defense. You saw the 49ers, how they run their team. They, they have an average offense. And, and the defense can pick up on their mistakes. You have, like, folks, I do not give a fuck if this league is becoming more of an offensive league. But if you look on two sides of the ball, if you look at the Vikings, for example, yes, they have a, they have a very elite offense. But if you look at their defense, their defense is historically bad. They're not going to win the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. They're not going to win the Super Bowl. Like, the only way they ever win a Super Bowl is if they score more points than the opponent. Like I said, you need to have a average offense and a historically good defense. You saw what the Niners are doing right now. Their offense doesn't look too good, but but if you look at their defense, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is as long as the quarterback is playing at a confident level. Niners down to their third string quarterback Brock Purdy. He doesn't look like the best quarterback, but he's playing at a confident level. The defense, I guess no one no one has anything bad to say about that defense. And I'm I'm going to be and I'm going to say right here, it wouldn't shock me if the 49ers win the Super Bowl is they have a balanced team. They have an average offense and a historical defense. So that's what I want the Bears to do. They need a good defense and an average offense. And I know many Bears fans are like, oh, but that's what we've been having our entire life, average offensive and a historical defense. No, 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 no. Hear me out for a second. We have always had mediocre offense at best. The last time we had a elite offense, well, you could say our offense was above average this year. And um, 2013, where we had a elite offense, do you want to know what the problem was, folks? Is our defense. And it ultimately cost us when we were going to the playoffs and we needed to beat Green Bay. But uh, whoever that cornerback was, oh, Chris, Chris, uh, uh, what's his face? Someone someone will remind me in the comment section. But it was a blown coverage. Folks, you can't have it either way. We have been mediocre for this entire year. We have never had a good, good offense. And when we had a good offense, or at least an average offense, back in 2018 when we had a average offense and a historical defense – do you want to know what that result, folks? A 12-4 and four record. Yeah, we got bounced out, but that doesn't exempt. We had a balance at uh, both sides of the ball. Now, if you go look at 2011, where we were in the NFC title game, we had a balanced game. We had a average offense and a good defense. That's what you need, folks. You need a average offense and a good defense if you're going to win Super Bowls. You're not going to win Super Bowls with a elite offense and a bad defense. Those never happen. Name me one Super Bowl where a team won with, with, with a historical bad defense. Because I can't remember the last time. Most of the teams that have dynasties, folks, most of the teams that succeed long-term is because they have a balanced attack. And I'm telling you, if you think the Vikings are going to win the Super Bowl, I don't – I understand, but I don't think they are. That defense is going to catch up to them. They might have got lucky against the Colts, but they're not – like if, the, if they're going up against a team, Kansas City, Philadelphia, 
or any other elite offense, they're done. Because the goal, if you have a bad defense, your only way to win is if you score more points than your opposing team and you kill clock time, folks. But to me, Matt Eberflus, I think this year does not define his future. I think next year will define his future. So that's all I have to say, folks. Hope you are having a blessed uh, Monday. I know none of us are happy on a Monday. But anyways, thank you all for uh, tuning in. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you are new. And thanks for watching.